Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got two things we want to talk about. We're going to talk about the new program. As we told you, each of you have automobiles that you've been paying insurance on monthly, bi-monthly. Some of you are riding around without insurance. Shame on you. You should always have coverage on your vehicle, some type of collateral cover in your vehicle. Well, we have one that will do just that. It's not our company that provides it. We're providing everything else. You'll have to pay that fee separately. We will tell you what the fee is. We won't charge you no commission or nothing like that. It's just a straight fee. I need you to understand that. We're not here to get over on you, but the price range anywhere from 250, pay attention, to $500. It's your choice as to how much collateral coverage you want on your vehicle. Now, with that being said, we've already done told y'all, don't be asking us what our policies and procedures are and how we do things. You're going to have to go to the site. This site isn't up yet. This isn't up yet. This won't be up until Sunday, the 20th, by the 21st. But this won't be up until at least the 20th. So you can't click on anything. The special offer, pay attention, special offer. Of $300 is by clicking on the donation link underneath the video that is what the company is allowing me to offer you those of you who are the loyal ones those of you who are the ones who've tried to help out and things didn't work out well now we're gonna help you out mind you pay attention people what we're getting ready to do for you especially especially covering that age of the majority act especially giving you let, let's get to the age of the majority act hold on not there that's not the age of the majority act this is the age of the majority it's the beginning of the age of majority the age of majority the uniform transfer minors act and the uniform gifts act there are two acts i love this case right here the estate of jones Ooh -wee. i don't know who that jones is but hey he's somebody ain't he and then there's the state of smith Mm -mm -mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Trust Miners Act, Uniform Trust Miners Act, and Uniform Gift to Miners Act. There are two of them. Uniform Gift to Miners Act and Uniform Trust Miners Act. See, Gift to Miners Act, Trust, not Trust, but <laughs> Transfer, Transfer Miners Act. Okay, they both have their pros and they both have their cons. One of them is still operating today for those who were born in the usa prior to 1986 i believe it is if you're born prior to 1986 your grandfather did under the uniform gift to minors act every state recognizes it pay attention minnesota court rule requires an affidavit well guess what i just want y'all to pay attention okay we put the temporary affidavit up there for you give you an idea but what you don't understand i want you to pay attention to right here we provide you something else that's going to give y'all a little heads on up. Okay, there's a California Family Code section that requires when you attain the age of majority that you disaffirm. Affirmance is affidavit, ladies and gentlemen. All prior affidavits while in infancy. We've been talking about that for years. Every state has it. Every state has it. Well, we're going to do that for you. Finally, and we're going to give it to the correct agencies within the state that require that now look hold on we put this here you have to click on the picture once you click on the picture it's going to take you to a link probable cause hearing most of you guys are letting the officer just arrest you and put you in jail and hold y'all there and then take y'all to a jail uh, arraignment called a, a, an arraignment tell them uh-uh you can't violate my rights like that no no this hearing was supposed to happen before the warrant was issued and the arrest the arrest has to be based on probable cause, so he has to have witnessed the crime. Okay, he cannot have suspicion. I don't care what the Supreme Court said. The Supreme Court does not overrule the Ninth and Tenth Amendment. What is the Ninth Amendment? The rights that you have as unalienable rights? Unalienable rights? The Supreme Court has no jurisdiction over that. Go back and take a look at the Ninth Amendment. The Tenth Amendment. The Supreme Court has no jurisdiction over the Tenth Amendment. It doesn't matter what they say. It's what the Ninth and Tenth Amendment secures. You don't have a Ninth and Tenth Amendment right 
The Ninth and Tenth Amendment secures your right to a probable cause hearing. Supreme Court has said that is a fundamental due process right. You don't need a statute from Congress. Hold on, let me show it to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, against this interest of the state, we must balance the individual interests sought to be protected, not by no stupid 14th Amendment, but by the Bill of Rights. Protected. These are protected rights. F, the 14th Amendment. This is defined in our holding in that the fundamental prerequisite of due process of law is the opportunity to be heard. Granis versus Ordeen. Okay. The right to be heard has little reality or worth unless one is informed that a matter is pending and can choose for himself whether to appear, default, acquiesce, or contest. Do not let that escape your memory. One of the most fundamental, basic principles of due process, foundational, that's what fundamental means, foundational principles of due process. It's a prerequisite, not a requisite. One of the, one of the most fundamental prerequisites of due process of law is the opportunity to be heard. It says the right to be heard has little reality or worth unless one is informed prior that a matter is pending prior. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why it's a prerequisite, not a requisite. Watch this. Hold on. We ain't finished. It's only mentioned twice here. An elementary, foundational, and fundamental requirement of due process in any proceeding in which in which is to be accorded finality is noticed reasonably calculated yeah they had prior notice under all circumstances including if they're seeking a warrant they have the right to call you in especially if they know your address to be apprised or to apprise interested parties of the pendency of an action and afford them an opportunity to present their objections this is what we were telling the court in SDC, and I'm about to talk about that in a second. These are the cases that support that. It says the notice must be in such a nature to reasonably convey the required information, as they mentioned in this case, and it must afford a reasonable time for those interested to make their appearance, but if with due regard to the practicalities and particularities of the case, these conditions are reasonably met. The constitutional requirement is satisfied. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're doing. We're trying to help you understand what your rights were, not are, and what they remain to be. You just have to know them. And so we're putting together a program to help you. The program officially starts on the 20th. That is this Sunday, August 20th. The link for getting in on the introductory, the introductory, that's why we didn't put the link and highlight that in the last video. This is us trying to help. Okay, it is not mandatory. You don't have to come in under the introductory. But the introductory is $360 below the actual cost of the program. $360 below. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have to click on the donation link underneath, not the consult link, the donation link. This introductory price is not being offered through SACOM. It's only being offered through the Eon channel at this time. The program is being offered by SACOM. I have given them that program. But as a result, the agreement is, is that I'm able to offer my people a discount. That's what you get. $360 discount. If you want to take advantage of it, click on the donation link. We won't start anybody's participation in the program until Sunday. Do not ask SACOM to explain anything to you because it's not their job. They're not even offering the program yet. It won't be until probably midnight Sunday Pacific Standard Time. So definitely by the 21st, everything will be up. We already You already see we have the site and the links already together. I'm just showing you where we stand, okay? Now, with that being said, we're gonna step away from that and that and that. We're gonna step away from all of that 
and we're going to segue 10 minutes. So you have up until the 10 minute mark to understand now. Now we're going to talk about something different. I need to show y'all something. Let me see. What's up? Okay, we can do this. And while I am doing this, I need to go. Now, I don't know where it is. I got to find it. It is right here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the SEC Binance case. The court has done something rather unique. There was a gentleman, his name was Thomas Clark Nelson. Thomas Clark Nelson, um, archive.org. I believe he's the individual who founded archive.org. Thomas Clark Nelson knew his stuff. He wasn't a novice. He did his research. He didn't do no YouTube research. Thomas Clark Nelson is before YouTube, okay? He did his research. He went back and studied the law like there's an, uh, he is known as Luke. He's a first century Christian. He wrote the book of Acts and he wrote the book of, uh, excuse me, he wrote the book of Acts. Sorry, I was out there cutting grass and I just noticed I got grass all over me. He wrote the book of Acts and he wrote the book of Luke. I am your father. And he talked about going back and studying things and investigating things from their conception, from their beginning. Well, that's what Cl Thomas Clark Nelson did. Now, there are some things that we found out um, a little bit more information because we have access to a little bit more information. But for the most part, 99% of what Thomas Clark was saying was 100% accurate. Look up his name, Thomas Clark Nelson, and you'll start to pull up the document. Most of his documents are on our website. But he was 100% accurate. And you know what he said? He said that the courts do not respond to his filings. Why? Because <laughs> they can't. They can't rebut what he's saying because he's using facts against them. Well, let me show you what the courts can't do now. Sealed on PACER. Sealed on PACER. Why are they stealing my documents? See, Eon, 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 Eon. Why are they stealing my documents on behalf of the customers? Well, they're doing one to piss me off. They want me to get angry. They wanted me to respond, blah, 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 blah. I said, leave to file denied. Ladies and gentlemen, I wasn't asking her for her permission. I was asking her to reconsider her actions before I bring action in a way that she's not seen before. In a way that I prove to her what I'm capable of. It's coming. Like Toddy T said in the battle round. Okay. New York, California, it's coming. Now it's here. The battle round, it's coming. I'm going to be patient because I'm representing the interests of others. But she is making it about me. Eon is not all capital letters, and they know that. They know that he is a natural person because he came as a natural person. I asked her to reconsider her stupidity. She chose not to. Ladies and gentlemen, all I did was put in here that, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Court, you have an EIN number. Hold on, let me see if I can pull that up for y'all. And Mr. and Mrs. Court, not only do you have an EIN number, but the SEC has an EIN number. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Court, guess what? Did you know that the SEC's EIN number is the same EIN number? Pay attention. The same EIN number as who? Who? Yes, same EIN number as the Vanguard Group. The same EIN number as the Vanguard Group. You don't believe me? Here is one federal EIN number from 2012. I want y'all to pay attention because this is very important. As soon as it pops up, oh, I'm sorry, I got to pause y'all because it will mess up. So one second. I'll... Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the court, the Administrative Office of the United States Court. This is their EIN number. This is also their second EIN number. This is the Judicial Center EIN number. That's the so-called Judicial Department for the United States government. This is the United States judges, all of them, including state. Pay attention. This is the United States Sentencing Commission. It's all a corporation. These are EIN numbers, employer identification numbers. These are not so that the government can document withholding taxes. That's what they want you to believe. 
but their comprehensive annual financial report, thanks Clint Richardson, inclusive of notes, ledgers, term definition, and references, prove that they're privately owned. Now hold on, let's go to the SEC. Y'all don't mind if we take a trip downward? Department of, well, no, I think they are the Securities Exchange Commission, but they're listed differently. So if I can't find them immediately, then, and we only ain't gonna talk about the Department of Justice. All of the executive departments are corporations. That's what you just simply need to understand, including the United States Treasury. They are corporations. Okay, they're under the same EIN number as the Department of Agriculture, a corporation. All right. Let's go. We're going to go down to S. I know it ain't under S. Yes, it is. It's under S, y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. And you don't stop. Okay, Social Security Administration and the Securities Exchange Commission. You see this EIN number right here, 84? 1024566. Well, do your research. This is the Vanberg Group. Go ahead, take a look. A private corporation has the CIN number along with the Securities Exchange Commission. How can a private corporation and the Securities Exchange Commission have the same EIN number? The government is run by officials elected by the public. The government is always public, never private. Same number as the Vanberg, Vanguard, excuse me, Vanguard Group. Vanguard, the second most wealthiest corporation in the world. Conglomerate, more like it. It controls countries, sections of the world. Vanguard, go ahead and look up the Vanguard Group. Well, this is their EIN number. Go ahead and check. How is it possible? No, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're not going to believe this. Y'all not going to believe this. We're going to go here. Department of Agriculture. That's their EIN number, told you. But hold on, we're going to go on down. Ease on down the road. Ho. Do, do, do. Let's ease on down. Ease on down the road. Ho. Don't you care nothing that might be alone. Come on, ease on down, ease on down the road whoa stop that train did you see that's a different EI 530 wait hold on sec sec 84010 wait hold on wait hold on sec securities exchange commission then sec in parentheses hold on now let's make sure we got the right one because we could be wrong uh sec securities exchange commission sec in parentheses uh oh See that number right there, 8,500? That's the same number for the Vanguard Group. Same one. How is that possible? That's what I put on the record of that court. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why that witch, Amy Berman Jackson, she's seen me before, but that's why she sealed the document because she didn't want you all to see it. See, I'm not Donald Trump. They can't censor that information because that's public information. And if Donald Trump knew better, he would understand that anything that the prosecution talks about, he has the right to talk about. If the prosecution go out there and give news conferences, so can he. If the prosecution can inform the public, Donald Trump can inform the public. Y'all need to understand the law. The law is equal protection of law. All men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable and unalienable rights. That's the Equal Protection of Law Clause. It's not that junk in the 14th Amendment. 14th Amendment didn't give you that right. That was the initial agreement that all men were to be construed as created equal. So those of you who were held slaves, and we have the United States Corporation where its first president was a slave owner, and Thomas Jefferson was a slave owner, and Adams was a slave owner, and all these other slave owners this government promoted, slavery, it made an income off of it. Of course they can be sued. You just have to know about how to go about doing it. I got too many other pots in the pan and pots in the pans, pots in the pans. 
okay? So I can't do that right now. I can just point you in the right direction. Please understand, if I didn't know what I was doing, why is, pay attention, sealed, sealed. Why are my documents sealed and no other documents sealed on this whole thing? There are hundreds of documents filed in this case. Why are my the only one to be sealed? Take a look. Why are my documents sealed? What reason do they have to seal my documents? Sealing it means that it's not available for the public view, only for the parties to the case and the judge. Sealed means, see, they sealed the, pay attention, sealed. Why? Why? Huh? Why, 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 why? These are transcripts, sealed, why? because they believe they're giving up personal information. Now this, fine, seal that, that's a testimony. This was a proceeding held on June 13th, okay? Date of issuance, June 16th, the court reporter. The transcript may be ordered by submitting a transcript order after the first 90 days. After 90 days, the transcript will be accessed on pay, 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 pay sir. Ladies and gentlemen, but they're not saying that down here. Hundreds of documents sealed. They're saying access denied. Well, even if access is denied, the document appears on court. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Wait. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Uh oh. Extension of time. Nope. Hold on. Tick tock. Extension of time. Nope. Hold on. Let's see. Certificate, Binance, intervene. Uh, this is a response. That's a response. Wait, hold on. TikTok. Oh, by Eon. TikTok by Eon. We didn't steal these documents. They're saying the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, they're saying the exact same thing. I put the SEC's EIN number on this as well. The only difference between that document and this document, pay attention, is I put the court's EIN number here and all of the other states' EIN numbers. Wait, hold on. Y'all, y'all, I know y'all don't understand. Hold on one second. Be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is for the district court against Binance. We're asking them for a review. Request for reconsideration. Jurisdictional challenge. Continue and specify the petition to intervene and cross complaint. Ladies and gentlemen, let's um, just scroll on down. First thing we do is we put in subject matter jurisdiction respecting corporations. The SEC gets its authority to change the structure of government. In other words, where does it get that authority? We're asking federal questions. We can see governments are instituted among men, deriving their power, just powers, from the consent of those governed. I didn't make that up. Those are not my words. Then we have this DC of Columbia Code. The SEC is registered in the District of Columbia. Okay, the District of Columbia are subject to being sued. Those corporations in the District of Columbia are subject to being sued in the district courts. That's all we're saying. Then we put in the district has created a corporation for municipal purposes. Even the District of Columbia can be sued because it's a municipal government, a corporation. Shh, don't tell nobody. And then here, the Securities Exchange Commission has a FIPS number. Okay, and then by having a FIPS number, they also have an EIN number. This is the Vanguard number. We talk about it, the Vanguard Group Incorporated. Seven trillion dollars in assets. That's who she's protecting, people. I don't give a fuck about no Vanguard group. I dare not my concern. I'm not going after the Vanguard group. I could care less about the Vanguard group. What I care about is that the SEC is in cahoots, in conspiracy, in collusion with a private corporation. There is no justification. There is no law. That's what I'm saying. Now I'll put my headset back on. That way I won't sound so excited. I just can't hide it. Here is the other SEC number. They have two EIN numbers. So which corporation is before the district court? 
and we talk about the two separate EIN numbers representing the same interest at the same time. That's defined as fraud. You can't be two persons at the same time. That's fraud. That's what I was saying. That's why the judge struck this from the record. These are their EIN numbers. Hold on. We we I ain't I promise you I ain't finished. Y'all just don't know. See, look at all that. That's too much information for her to be ignoring. So I put the federal judges. EIN numbers here. And the state judges. EIN numbers here. She didn't want that. That was too much. Then I talk about the March 1933 Act. And I talk about how the Securities Exchange Act did not apply to commercial paper. But the, pay attention, National Emergency Bank and Relief Act of March 9, 1933 could apply to commercial paper. That was also a security. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you understand? Those are the cases that support what you're doing. Your documents are not securities under the Securities Exchange Act. They're securities under the National Emergency Banking Relief Act. So I said, we, so we advised this court to err on the side of caution and to appoint counsel to address these issues. And the court said, you. So I said, look here, mother, take a look, you ignorant son of a, sorry. Wusa, I want you to take a look. This is the judicial counsel for every state. This is the EIN number for every state. This is Department of Revenue for every state. This is their secondary EIN number for every stupid state. And this is the amount that they pay in taxes, according to the Census Bureau. These are non-sovereign taxes paid by each of these entities. This is why she, wait, no, no, hold on, hold on. Let me go slow. This is public information. This is not private information. These are public entities. Wait, hold on. Either they are public entities or they are private entities. Take your pick. I dare you. Do you see what I just did there? I just put them in a catch-22 and they didn't even know it. And now they got to deal with me. You see, either these are private numbers given to private corporations or they are public numbers for public entities for government-sponsored corporations which cannot serve private interests. Supreme Court's been highlighting that for years. So let's talk about the District of Columbia, the states united, and the territories. Do you see all of them, how much they pay per year, annual? Go ahead, just keep a looking. Now, right now, I'm running my uh, generator, so y'all have to excuse me. I had to turn it on because we've been having some clouds, and I've been running things aplenty here late in this evening, and I ain't supposed to be doing that, but I was outside doing some work. Now, hold on now. Just keep, I'm going slow so that y'all can know what issues we were bringing up in that case and why they decided to seal these documents. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of her. I know exactly what she needs to be taken care of legally. And I'm gonna legally give her everything she's got coming to her because legally it's the only way you can handle these people. She knows what's going on. That's why I put their, pay attention. I put their junk on the public record. Pay attention. The aforementioned corporations represent private interests. They are not government. And on this public record, in this public forum, we bring forth such a challenge to such operations and or conduct as being contrary, unbecoming, unlawful, illegal, and unconstitutional. This court is duty bound to address such issues, to answer such questions, and to prove the facts on the record. If it purports to ignore the elephant that continues sitting in the room, smiling at everybody and waving and shouting and dancing, as if nobody can see it. What is the elephant in the room? The truth. Come on now. The truth is always the elephant in the room. It's always the fly on the wall. Every time you lie, the truth is looking right back at you going, you ignorant mother. Pay attention to this. This is the last one I'm going to read. The truth is, the truth. Each of these agencies, including this court, the judicial officers, operate as corporations. 
They have EIN numbers. The IRS only applies EIN numbers to corporations. Go ahead and look at the facts. EIN numbers are for taxpayers. It is a universal maxim that the sovereign and or the king pays no tax. So how is it that the comprehensive annual financial reports clearly document and evidence as a matter of law the taxes paid by these so-called imposter sovereign incapacitated entities. That's treason, apparently. That's insurrection, apparently. That's rebellion against the United States government that is done openly, notoriously, and with complete disregard for the rule of law. <coughs> Do you understand what I just did to them? I just, pay attention, Trump them. This is the same thing they're charging Trump with for acting in the same capacity for abusing his power. They said he was operating in a sovereign capacity. They said he was operating in a sovereign capacity. And if he was operating in a sovereign capacity, pay attention, y'all. And he incited a riot or he incited a rebellion against the United States, he is guilty of treason. Pay attention. I don't know what to tell you about Trump's case. I don't have an idea. I haven't looked at it. All I can tell you is there's two things about Trump. Trump could have ordered the seizure of each one of those election boxes and had a member of Congress for the House of Representatives and the Senate present with the seizure of those and the counting of the ballots for each one. Could have had it videotaped and everything. He had the authority to do it as the President of the United States under the National Emergencies Act because it represented a threat to the sovereignty of the nation and the security of the nation if the election had been tampered with. Trump did not do this. I didn't understand why he didn't do this. I believe his children were threatened. I believe this lawsuit thing is all a hoax. I do not believe it is real. I believe it's a great distraction. That's what I believe. You know what else I believe? I believe that this whole government that we have in the United States are impersonating public officials. I believe that they know it. I believe that they are doing it openly, notoriously, and with complete disregard to the rule of law. I believe that the court is complacent in this conduct. I believe that they know all of these laws. You see, one thing I did not do is I did not impose conjecture. I gave them the facts. Addendum two of two. This is the Attorney General's slavery and peonage. And this is me putting this attachment onto the record, letting them know that this is the order of the Attorney General. Every word, every, every, everything, a complete copy of this, because by taking our property, they are subjecting us to slavery. Why? Because only a slave doesn't have a right to own property. I've not been anybody's slave, ever. And I refuse to be theirs now. That's what I'm doing. So I hope this makes sense to those of you who are paying attention. When I tell you that I know what I'm doing, pay attention. Here is the addendum. Okay? This is talking about disrespecting the sanctity of the court regarding the SEC. And it's supplanting the authority of the people. Okay, the Congress cannot give authority to the legislature, I mean to the SEC to have powers it doesn't belong it doesn't belong to it. So what I put in here is the thing about the president receiving 470 laws. Told him that was illegal. They don't want that junk on the record. I even talk about Binance. I talk about how nobody was talking about the customers. Now you know what? Binance puts in one motion. One motion and they talk about the customers 85 times. In one motion they had not even talked about them 10 times in one motion before but now 85 times oh snap oh snap supreme court lets them know that they have a stupid rule that violates the due process clause of the first amendment the court's trying to prevent us from working together oh well that's what we're doing we're bringing facts. No conjecture. You won't see a single code. USC who? Football. 
delegating 470 laws to the executive branch, where the executive branch gets to dictate the law and to make those laws, each and every one of them, and the associated and or addition and or adhesion contracts unconstitutional. Of course we can challenge that, especially if this court is relying on a single one of these laws. One of the laws Congress delegated authority to the executive branch for and the administrative branch is the APA, which is where it is perceived that the SEC obtains some type of authority. We're challenging the APA because the SEC is represented by the Attorney General because it claims to be representing the people. We gave them the petition. They are required by law to serve such on the SEC. I mean, the SEC is required by law to give it to the principal. Notice the agent is notice the principal. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that the SEC sues corporations every single year? According to Geisner, on the 26th of June or about 2023, that idiot said that they settle 700 to 800 cases per year. This is hundreds of millions, millions, and billions of dollars. Okay, where does that money go? Okay, then why was he asking Congress for more money? See, according to the law, they get to keep every penny. So why was he asking Congress for more money? It's a sham, ladies and gentlemen. The SEC knows that the company is going to raise your prices because when you're paying for the stuff from these corporations, they're going to raise prices and now you're going to have to pay double. So that means you're being doubly taxed by the SEC. Why? Because the SEC gets their budget from tax payers. And so they know that they're going to overcharge you. That's double taxation. That's what we're bringing up, people. That's what the court doesn't want on the record. This is what I do. Now, as you notice, not one of the single points that I'm bringing up deals with any conjecture or deals with any sovereign citizen, anything. I don't play that. I'm letting them know what the facts are. We're not doing anything but facts here. Simply the facts, ma'am. Simply the facts. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry, that's the document we're working on for the new program, and hopefully that will be soon complete. Now, let's get back here to this. I want you to see the judge just issued another order today. Okay, the very same day it issued an order sealing these documents. It didn't even read ours. It said, please, I ain't answering that bull. That's what the judge said concerning what was placed on the record for us those of us who are involved in this Binance suit. See, they're saying we're not parties to the suit. Ladies and gentlemen, Binance owns the wallet that we use. It's called Trust Wallet. Our funds are in Trust Wallet. Binance is blocking access to those funds even at this moment. Communications and everything. So we are connected with Binance in more than one way. Not only that, but the trading platforms that we trade on, that they're holding our funds. They think that they're smarter than me. And they are. They're attorneys. They called me a serial litigant. You see, now you see how right here in the minute order, she puts my name in lowercase caps. But down here, this hoe, and I can call her that because she decided to disrespect me. No, it's not, it's not tit for tat. I know this hoe. I know exactly what she is. And the moment she stops doing her job, she's no longer a judge. The moment she apps, operates in absence of all jurisdictions, she is not a judge. That means she's for sale. Any woman that is for sale is a hoe. You don't believe me? Go look at the definition. I'm not calling her out of her name. I'm telling her exactly what she is. The very same thing that hoe would do if I was standing before her. She would call me all kinds of names. She would talk about me in front of the audience, in front of the gallery, in front of everybody. She would make it a point. They made it a point to make this about me. They made it a point to make it about me. It's not about me. It is not about me. It's about the customers. And now, finally, Binance, I'm going to give them a little bit of credit. I want you all to see. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about. And I showed it to you all once before. But it's the last thing I'm going to talk about. This is Binance. We're going to do a Control F on my Windows computer. We're going to do, not the SEC, because I don't want the SEC. We're going to do customer C. O. S. T. Customer. Uh-oh. 
You know what? I put the O in a U. That's the first time today I've done that. Normally that does happen, but that's the first time today I've done that. Come on now. Hold on. Nope. No, I had it right. All right, let's do this right. I'm tired. And y'all have to excuse me because I really, really, really am tired. Um, I want to tell you guys. Oh, I'm in the wrong document. I had customer, right? I apologize, y'all. I'm in the wrong document. I had customer, right? Uh, that's how tired I am, people. That's the proposed order. I don't need the proposed order. I was outside and I was cleaning up. It was still 99 degrees outside, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I don't know if you guys understand about temperatures, but it doesn't matter if it feels cool. It was still 99 degrees. Now, I can't put customers because if I put customers, now you see 85 times the word customer appears. You see, they weren't talking about customers before me. That's why I came into this is because they were talking about taking the customer's assets. Now they're talking about protecting the customer's assets. You see, produce all communications concerning dozens of topics, many of which have nothing to do with customer's assets. Now they're concerned about customer's assets before they were getting ready to turn over documents concerning customer assets. They are starting to realize that I was actually helping them out. It took them that long to realize when I brought up the issue, I was helping them out. See, they couldn't say it initially. They needed somebody like me to come in and raise the issue so they could raise the issue. Do you guys not understand if the SEC had challenged them coming after the customer's assets, the judge would have capitulated and gave it to them. But because I came in and I brought it up, now they get to come and play Captain save a -hole and say, oh, your honor, hold on, wait a minute. We just noticed that their, their, their request is overbroad. This was not in your order. You only asked for things concerning this, and they're asked, they're, it's overbroad. That's what they are bringing up. It's overbroad. Where do you think they got the idea from? That was my doing. I told you all, I've been doing this for, pay attention, 40 years next month. 40 years exactly next month. I didn't even realize it until last week that how long I've been doing this. How long I've been going in the court. Won my very first case in court. And helped so many other people along the way. This is what I do. Customers. Customers. They weren't talking about customers before. Let's do this. Hold on. Let me, y'all, y'all don't give me, give me a couple more minutes. If y'all don't mind, this not a lot of minutes. We can go to the top, to the tippity 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 top. We need the original complaint. Here is the complaint from a company called the SCC. The SCC files this complaint. This is the SCC's complaint. They asked for a jury trial. We asked for a jury trial too. If they can ask for a jury trial, now here they are. They're saying customers 85 times. Pay attention. Now let's. Uh oh. Wait. Hold on. We 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 in the wrong spot. They're saying it 157 times. Let's do this. Customers continue trading on the platform. Okay, it says, while simultaneously concealing their efforts to ensure that most vulnerable U.S. customers continue trading on the platform. Really? The plaintiff did not serve U.S. persons. Hold on. I don't understand this. Wait, let's read this. As the second part of Binance plan, to shield themselves from U.S. regulators, they consistently claim to the public that Binance.com platform did not serve U.S. persons. Okay, so Binance is not representing us. We're from the U.S. They know we're from the U.S. Hold on. Got to go on to the next. I'm looking for U.S. customers and circumventing those controls. Look, though the chairman of Binance to assist certain high-value U.S. customers in circumventing those controls and to do so, 
Serapolis, Serapolis, see, I can't even say Serapolis tentatively because Zoe himself acknowledged Binance did not want to be held accountable for those actions. See, Binance couldn't represent the U.S. customers. SEC is bringing a complaint against the U.S. customer because they said that they were hiding funds. They were money laundering. So they decided to hold our funds, whether we were convicted of money laundering or not. Then they say, simultaneously providing security-related services to U.S. customers put to safety of billions of dollars of U.S. investor capital at risk in Binance and Zoe's mercy. Yeah, because they're taking control. They are not releasing control. That's why I sued both of them. You see, when they are talking about the customers, they're talking about the customer in a negative light because they're suing the customer, saying that the customer is in collusion with Binance. Nobody is talking about protecting the customers. No one. Then they say, how they took billions of funds from us and commingled with the account of this so-called CEO. We don't believe he did that. We believe that, yes, they transferred funds, but they were permitted to do that as a corporation because it was, quote-unquote, not an investment. It wasn't an investment. These are not investments. These are trades. Our investment is on the market. When they're holding our funds, that's not an investment. I understand that altogether too well. It continued to maintain a substantial U.S. customer base for several years thereafter. Of course it did. We are part of that customer base. We're just trading on a platform overseas. But our monies originate here in the United States. They can't get around that. Saying they maintain custody and control over the crypto assets deposited, held, and traded or accured by customers on the Binance platform. We're saying the same thing. Now they're saying we are not parties to the suit. I am so grateful that I'm doing this video. Ooh, well, hold on, hold on. I see accused. Hold on, where's my accused? Or by a customers, I saw accused. Oh, accured, sorry. Ooh -wee. I just read it, but I, I looked over it so fast. I told y'all I was tired. Oh, this is what I was trying to say earlier. I was outside, ladies and gentlemen, cleaning the area around the, because um, there was a lot of tall grass around the generator. I couldn't turn that thing on for fear that something would catch fire. So I literally had to clean up all the way around it for more than six feet and wet everything down. Well, I turned it on first after I cleaned everything around, but just to make sure I wet everything. And it just turned off, letting me know that I can go out there and turn it off. So I'm about to go turn it out because it needs to be off. Okay, service to customers. Sigma claims to have served as one of the counterparties to Binance platform customers, including at times serving as the only counterparty. Is that something? There is another county party. Oh, see, further, since Binance US platform began offering over-the-counter trading and its convert trading and one click buy sell service sigma i don't know who sigma is i gotta put y'all on pause so y'all have to excuse me as soon as it lets me Uh, there we go. Now it took it away again. Give me a second. One second, y'all. Sorry. I just turned the generator off, and in doing so, I had to wet it down to make sure that there wasn't a problem later with it being hot and something blowing next to it and all of that stuff. Hey, this is California. I'm not going to have no Maui you know, setting off fires and then burning all those people to death. No, I don't think Maui was a mistake. You don't see a single fire department. Yes, they couldn't have done anything. And if they were there and the fact that they told, pay attention, 
told the helicopters to stand down. Said it was too dangerous for the helicopters, but not too dangerous for the people. Don't take my word for it. No sirens, no alarms, no nothing. No sirens, no alarms, no nothing. Tell me that wasn't intentional. That's Hawaii. The same Hawaii that got bombed December. That that Hawaii, 1942, I believe it was. That That's the Hawaii that didn't have alarms this time? Really? Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Well, we ain't gonna have that around here. I'm gonna be very careful. Conjunction, junction, what's my function? Ladies and gentlemen, it's supposed to be a 15 minute video, but I needed to do the video showing people the documents so that they can know that it's on the public record. They are trying to hide those documents from the public record. That's why I covered what I covered so that we can have it on the public record. You see, the customers are members of the public. I'm sharing this with my fellow customers on my private YouTube channel. My channel's not public. Google doesn't advertise my channel. Go ahead and take a look. They stopped advertising my channel, what, five years ago? Actually, they really stopped in 2012, but we ain't going all the way back there. But they stopped advertising my channel. They don't recommend my channel. They only recommend my channel to me, literally. And they didn't start doing that until last, the end of last year, November. So they only recommend my channel to me. I don't care about views. They mimic the numbers anyway. They give a certain set of numbers and that's what they're gonna say is my uh, views. The people who watch my videos, that certain set of numbers. I don't care. Let Google play its game. Let the court play their game. They can't keep this off the record. I'll be doing a video in the future, placing these documents online and giving you guys access. I told them I'm not playing now. All the other times I was testing the system. I, I wanted to see if there was one honest judge out there, a judge like Judge Stevens, a judge who was going to be completely honest, rule by the rules, not rule for me because he liked me and he did like me. But when, <laughs> let me tell you something, when I didn't have things in order, you better believe he checked me and I give him all the credit because if it wasn't for Judge Stevens, and like I said, I believe he is deceased at this time because he was in his late 60s more than 20 years ago. I don't know if he is. I can't say that. I hope he isn't because he's, in my opinion, was a good man. He really did try to help people despite that wicked system in Los Angeles. But judges like him, there's only been a few. There's only been a few like Judge Stevens. They don't exist anymore. If they made it to the appeals court, they now act like they got way too much power. They don't care about the little guy. See, Judge Stevens was the type of judge, if you came at him with law, if you came at him with facts, if you followed the rules, man, he didn't care if the other person was an attorney. You got the decision. I know I'm better than most attorneys. Then nobody, you don't have to tell me. The other attorneys don't have to tell me. The law firms don't have to tell me. These are things I know. But guess what? Attorneys have told me, judges have told me. So I don't need nobody else to tell me whether I have skills when it comes to this junk. They cannot argue with me because I bring them facts. I don't argue something I can't prove. They do it all the time, why? Because, pay attention. They practice by going to school and arguing with each other. Well, that's fine. They can argue. I'm not going to argue. I'm just going to state the facts and let the facts and chips fall where they may. They cannot handle those issues. They cannot handle the facts. The facts are beyond them. That's why they have to dismiss my petitions. And the appeals court is going to tell them they got their back because they're in just as much involved in the conspiracy as these idiots. And so, trust me, I've been planning this ooh, since 2012, when I was sitting alone in that cell, where those idiots kept arresting me.
thinking that they were getting one over on me. I just needed to prove that they were all corrupt. So I went from one state to the next proving this, keeping my mouth shut in that one case. Y'all got that? Kept my mouth shut, did not say a word. And then newspapers made it seem like I was crazy. He kept his mouth shut. I thought we all had a right to remain silent. Said anything I say or do will be used against me, so they used my keeping my mouth shut against me. They put it in the newspaper. Then got mad because I did YouTube videos pointing that junk out. Oh, well, my bad. I won't do that no more. So, as I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, this right here, the SEC already spoke out against this. You see, I didn't read. I didn't know this was 136 pages. I never read it. There was no reason for me to read it. I saw what the judge ordered. I had to wait for them to give us an introduction. I could have come off of this, but I needed the judge to do it. She called us a class. You see, they are trying to say that I'm coming in as an individual. They know I'm not coming in as an individual. They named the customers. Somebody has to represent the customers. Who is representing the customers? That's what I've been asking. They haven't pointed out a representative for the customers. They're talking about the customers so much, but now their focus is on the customers. Now Binance wants to protect the customers. Well, it couldn't protect the customers at first because it was accused of commingling funds and defrauding. It was accused of committing money laundering with the customers. So it couldn't represent the customers. They were both defendants. And it had to save its own neck. So it started giving up documents. And we're saying, oh, no, no, no. Y'all can't do that. Y'all can't be giving up our stuff. And so now the judge is saying, oh, no, y'all not a party. Ah, I didn't know they mentioned us 135 times. If I go up to Binance's response, guess what I'm going to find? Hold on. We're going to do that. I, I know I said last thing, but y'all got to understand, this is impotent. Nobody else has ever brought in a challenge like we're bringing okay nobody so let's see this appearances appearances we don't care about appearances notice of filing to redefine version of proposed order no we don't care that no proposed order we don't care about no proposed order we want a response finance holding declaration memorandum and opposition memorandum and opposition well, look at that. Oh, look, this is them coming in here. They got declamations and notice of my album of permanence, modest for leave to appear, all declamations, attorneys putting in declarations on the record. Y'all know an attorney cannot testify. A declaration is testimony. An attorney cannot testify. An attorney cannot testify. Pagliato. Okay. Pagliaro, whatever you call that case. An attorney cannot testify. These attorneys are testifying. Look at all these declarations from attorneys. An attorney, a declaration is testimony, ladies and gentlemen. Attorneys can not testify. Okay. Attorneys can not testify. They cannot offer testimony. They are not eyewitnesses to anything. And the reason why they can't testify is because they cannot be cross-examined to testify against their client. I hope y'all understand. I'm looking for their response. Y'all have to, y'all, y'all have to excuse me because there's a lot going on here. Notice of appearances, notice officer. Aw, and memorandum. See, there's a whole lot of junk in here, ain't it? <sighs> See, they get to file all this junk, and the judge doesn't say anything. Not a thing. Not a thing. So we're going to go back. That's another declaration. Attorneys just testifying. Test, I mean, test the line. That's right, test the line. Like police officers, they get to test the lie because... No, not testing a lie, but they get to test a lie on the record. Motion to amend, correct. Motion for leave, proposed order, 
Uh, let's see. Motion for leave. No, 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 no. Motion for temporary restraining order. Uh, Securities Exchange Commission complaint. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Notice of appearance. So we're going to have motion for TRO. I think this is by the Securities Exchange Commission. So it's not that. Motion for leave. Motion to file XX pages. And motion for leave. Declaration. Uh, exhibits to amend and correct. I don't want to download. I just want to see the PDF. All right, let's 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 see the PDF. This is the last one, I promise. Right, because you see how obscure it was. See, it's not even the motion. It's just the motion for leave. So I don't even know what their original response was. But I really don't care. Because they agreed to sign that petition. So we're, we're not even going to go to this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this later. Another time. Hey, thank you all for hanging around. If you want to be a part of that program, remember, it's the donate button only until Sunday. Sunday midnight. After Sunday midnight, that's gone. Okay? The donation button, you select 300 to be a part of that program. You will have your receipt. We will have a copy of the receipt. We will notify you after Monday. The 21st, we got you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, got to let you go. Got to let you go. All right, take care.